reaction to reaction to reaction. Hello everyone! Welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the early uploads from the YouTube channel The Game Theorists. I hope that you like this video because I like their video as well. I'm a huge fan of their work. Yeah, uh, this video came out in year 2016, so I think it's around 5 years ago. Let's start. Oh! oh. <gasps> Inception! Matt Bash reacts to some dude reacting to his fitness for reaction. Reacting to Matt Pat's reaction to the FNAF reaction video. <gasps> Is this still a reaction video? Yes, apparently so. <laughs> Welcome to Game Theory. Hello. Hello everyone. Welcome to Game Theory. <laughs> Where today isn't so much a game theory as it is an episode about game theory, the show. I suppose you could call it a game theory theory. Man, between the intro Insert 25 cents to self as I mean <laughs> Game Game Theory Theory <laughs> In that joke, this episode is already super meta. But in all honesty, I do these meta theories because if you're a gamer on YouTube or you watch gamers on YouTube, then mm -hmm. these things affect you. The videos you watch and the creators you support. Anyway, even though we're only four months in, 2016 has uh. seen a ton of scandal on YouTube. From where's the fair use to criminal allegations for top channels, YouTube has seen a lot of drama in a very, very short amount of time here. With serious issues like that floating around, it's almost a relief to see comment through Reds debating whether Batman v Superman actually sucked. But the biggest story of all was the one that happened at the top. <laughs> like, one of the most important thing is Batman vs Superman. Batman fires a kryptonite bullet to Superman. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Superman is, a, is faster than a spinning bullet. Of the year around one of YouTube's most subscribed, most watched, and wow. most widely known channels, the Fine Brothers. You know, kids react, teens react, elders react, YouTubers react, sentient chickens react. In January, they lit up the internet with one big announcement. We are excited to announce React World. A service meant to make it easier for people to create React style videos for a share of that video's revenue. And that was one big issue, but what really got people in a tizzy was their attempted trademarking of the word React. This Ooh. was, without any example, Exaggeration, one of the most talked about business moves any YouTube channel had ever made. And if the Fine Bros were hoping to inspire more people to create reaction videos with React World, well, they certainly succeeded, but not in the way they expected. <laughs> criticism came in from everywhere. Yeah, criticism came, came in from everywhere. I'm doing a reaction video about it, so... Oh my god, the internet is gonna blow up the internet. Uh, citing everything from breaches of fair use to abusive trademark law. The latest and most egregious attempt for a fat cat YouTuber channel to earn more money. And though three months later the drama seems to have largely subsided, the effect still lingers. With their new video showing a dislike ratio 400% higher than just a few weeks prior to the React World announcement. Now, whether you were joyfully watching their live subscription meters count backwards, or simply unaware of all of this, the React World controversy inspired a lot of discussion about fair use, trademarking and how YouTube is changing. So why do I- Yeah, the, the YouTube is changing. Even until now in 2021, YouTube is still changing. Um, yeah. Bring all this up. Why do I do a video about it now? Well, because they're all things I've wanted to address for a while now. But it's also something I've wanted to take my time with so that all of us, myself included- 
My reaction to the reactions about the reaction reaction. It could be further away from the heated emotions of a few months ago and really look at the situation from as objective of a perspective as we all can. Because honestly, there are additional points here that haven't been addressed and I think are things that merit at least some discussion. Now, if you're a longtime member of the theorist- Aww. Aww, so nice. Family, you'll know that the path of this channel has never been about overnight success. We've never really been that channel who stormed onto the scene and rocketed up the charts. We've similar to me, similar similarly to me, um, to the future self, to my future self. If I manage to be successful, well, thank you. And if not, then oh gosh, what are you doing? Improve. <laughs> and then let's continue. Absolutely had some big hits, especially with Five Nights at Freddy's. But for the most part, growing this community has been a long step-by-step -step subscribe. Come on, don't say that! Don't say that! I don't even have a three digits. I have twenty subscribers. Twenty two zero. Fiber by subscriber process. People commit to this channel not because it's trendy or cool, but because hopefully I've done my part to earn your trust by creating videos that are more often than not unique and different and interesting. I'm about to hit my five-year anniversary of creating this channel. Ah, five year anniversary. This video is from five years ago. So five plus five equals ten years in this year. Yeah. Obviously, I've been thinking back a lot on the journey thus far. Let me tell you, operating a successful YouTube channel is a roller coaster of emotions. So wait, wait a minute, Matt Pat, just a terrorist, a game terrorist. Simultaneously, the most rewarding and the most stressful job that you could ever have. And I'm sure you've heard stuff like that before, but unless you eat, sleep, and breathe YouTube, it's really hard to truly understand. So let me do my best to explain. Lost, confused, and sure, and clear. Explain it. Uh, perplexed. YouTubers exist in a dangerous position, at the mercy of pretty much everyone. First off, they're at the mercy of the internet, where one wrong business decision, poorly phrased sentence, or un <laughs> Mario is that big talk? Even until now, people are saying, why are you stepping tall, seriously? Popular opinion can set the rage of the masses upon them. <laughs> Ruining careers built over years of work, poof, True. overnight. But we're also at the mercy of YouTube itself, a platform Correct. we don't own. I've mentioned it before in the How YouTube is Broken video, but it bears repeating here. Just because Felix has 40 million subs and I have... Um, he has 100 plus million, so... I have six, and Mark has 11, uh, 12, uh, 13, sorry. Doesn't mean that we get access to all of you. We're at the mercy of YouTube systems. Whether or not you see our latest video is up to its algorithm, and one change to that can have devastating impacts on channels. I've seen it with channels I've consulted with. Overnight views dropping from 10 million views a month to three. Lives change. Uh, don't even talk about three million views. I, I'll be lucky to even have one view, and that is not even coming from me. I have 20 subscribers, pressing. Please consider to like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Anyways, let's continue. In an instant. You want to know why there's so many fewer scripted comedy videos on YouTube at this point? It's the algorithm. And when I say lives fundamentally changed, I'm not just referring to the lives of the people that you see on the screen. Most major channels at this point have at least an editor. Others have tens of people whose jobs are dependent on the revenue generated by the views that... There's a cin uh, cinematographer. There's artists, there's composers, there's animators, there's sound, sound engineers, and YouTubers have to collect everything and more into one in single individual. Come in every month. YouTube channels are businesses built on quicksand, constantly shifting by people who started on this platform as kids in their bedrooms or students fresh out of college. People who really just wanted to create and express themselves, not worry about paychecks and taxes and employees and building multi-million dollar media brands. So that was the situation and probably rings true for pretty much every big channel that you know and love at this point. But there's a new added wrinkle now, competition. Let me tell you a personal story. If you go back to what was my first big hit on the channel, Sonic is Slow, the intro includes these lines. The good folks over at Vsauce 3 recently took a gander at a game series I covered in episode 5, <laughs> The Science yes. of Sonic. They looked at how running faster wow. than the speed of sound would affect Sonic's body. Wow, the audio is so much different. It's a great video, except for one thing. It's wrong. Now let me give you some context. This is around episode 40. I had been doing the show pretty much every week for a year. The reason I included this line? In fact, the reason I made this video in the first place was to stick my flag in the ground, dig in my heels, and claim the theorist space. Why? Yes. Because Vsauce 3 had just launched three months earlier with their videos How Much Would Mario Coins Be Worth? and Could Cloud Sword Be Real? Topics that oh. hit very close to home for me. 
me. I felt dead in the water. Here I was, having done a similar sort of episode every week for a year, and with a hard-earned 32,000 subscribers to my name, and in pops the next spin-off channel of a YouTube behemoth. Three months into its lifespan with 10 times my subscriber count, nearly 350,000 at the time. And not only that, its first Game Theory style videos went super viral, getting over a million views. Wow. Yeah, times have changed. But when their next big one, The Science of Sonic the Hedgehog, rolled out and covered similar topics to a video I had done one year earlier, I felt like my format, my style of show had been stolen and that my channel was going to die. And even if oh. I was gonna be steamrolled, I needed to at least make a video that showed I was here first, damn. I was here first, even if I mm, die, I think. Social death. So why am I telling you this? Well, first, because it's a story I've never really shared with anyone other than Stephanie. And quite honestly, it's fun to look back on those earlier days. But also because uh. that situation taught me that audience isn't mutually exclusive. Obviously, the channel is still here today and going strong. Bigger than what was at the time. Oh my god, six point something million? Aww. That's so cute. You have more than times two of that. Our rival. What I came to learn was that right just now. because people watched Vsauce 3 didn't mean that they also wouldn't watch Game Theory. It was the way I presented information and the conclusions that I reached that made me different. The two channels could cover the exact same things, sometimes by complete accident we did on the same week. But our styles and presentation ensured that the audience of one wasn't sucking away the audience of the other. Competition oh. existed, sure, but it was at a very small scale. And since those early days, lots of other theorists have popped up on YouTube, which is great for the overthinker community. There's pretty much a style and personality for anyone's tastes. But now, True. four years later, there are new guys on the block. And I'm not talking about Mr. Wait, wait, wait. That is, this video is back in 2016, so five years later, there's new, new guys in the block. This individual. Just saying. Mr. Theorist Fist 24-7 working in his living room. No, I'm perfectly cool with Mr. Theorist Fist. We should probably collaborate at some point. Though, his screen name does feel a bit derivative. I'm talking about companies. Literally. TV networks, news outlets. Heck, in the last month alone, the pop culture website io9 and American business magazine Forbes have both started their own theory shows. Uh, don't worry, theirs aren't that good so far. But let me make this clear. This Ooh, shots fired! Ah! Ooh! <laughs> is io9, owned by Gawker Media, a $45 million company which also operates Gizmodo and Kotaku, to name a few. And Forbes is a business juggernaut, a company valued in the hundreds of millions. The new competitors on YouTube aren't really YouTubers. They're entities with massive money backing them, with huge teams to research, edit, and write, churning out weekly, even daily videos without breaking a sweat. It's not about Vsauce or Mr. Theorist Fist anymore. We are literally competing with Hollywood. And Obviously, this isn't just something that's happening in theorizing. Beauty gurus are going up against the Vogue channel's supermodels, telling you whether or not to wear overalls this spring. Scripted comedy channels have to fight against BuzzFeed. And who isn't gonna watch a humorous rehash of all the legends of the Hidden Temple jokes we've been tossing around for years? Hashtag Purple Parrot Pride! Which brings us back to the Fine Brothers <laughs> issue. For them, BuzzFeed, Huffington Post, even The Ellen Show started running React content online in early 2015. Shows like Ellen have hundreds of employees and and come to YouTube after they've already amassed <laughs> in life the toilet. <laughs> 4 million views on TV every day. There's no way to compete with that, right? And when you're the Fine Brothers, young business owners with over 50 employees depending on you for a paycheck, seeing giants like that mimicking your format and threatening to undo the last 5 years of work, it's scary. Let me make it clear here, I'm not taking any sides. There's still a whole page of the script left. Let me also make yes. it clear that I'm not talking about the originality of the format. I'm just saying that as a creator, Creator, I can relate to the defensiveness that could lead to a situation like the one they ended up in. My Vsauce 3 story had me feeling the same way. Seeing other people quote unquote stealing your space. Quote unquote st stealing your space. The, um, the mentality, uh, this, this, um, this, ne not necess this mentality that isn't necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It's like saying that them, us, them, us. 
But here's the thing, that mentality is wrong. The struggle of the Fine Brothers against Ellen or Miss Glamorazzi against Vogue is just as imaginary as my struggle against Vsauce 3 four years ago. The more things change, the more they stay the same. YouTube is still a platform where you vote with your view, regardless of whether you're watching Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, or Jimmy Sterling. Sorry, Jim, I needed the parallel structure. There's a reason why Zoella in her bedroom gets millions of views and Vogue supermodels in an artistic white void get tens of thousands. Because you choose what content you find most appealing, what formats and creators you most want to spend your time with. If Forbes's theories are better than mine or BuzzFeed's reactions are more reactive, I don't know, then they should get your view. When you think about it, you're the boss. We're your employees. Our job is to entertain. And if we're bad at our job, oh, we get fired. Replaced with a new, better guy. We as the- <laughs> Whoa, PewDiePie. Creators have to figure out ways to stay fresh and interesting and relevant to you as the viewer. In pretty much every industry in the world, competition is a good thing for you, the consumer. Sure. At the store, it results in better products at lower prices as companies work to earn your business. Uh, better prices, better product, better, better technology. That, on YouTube, it means better, funnier, more interesting videos for you. It encourages us to innovate, stay creative, and find new things for you to enjoy. I mean, in the last five years alone, these theories have gone from five minutes to 18 minutes. Yes. That's ridiculous. And it's because every step of the way, you as a viewer have driven me to think about new games, new topics, and not always just stay in my comfort zone. To cite a recent video by Markiplier, yes, YouTube is changing. Big media is storming in and dominating the homepage. The types of yes. Videos that are getting popular now are much different than the YouTube poops from almost a decade ago. YouTube is an industry now, and I know that sounds really intense and adult, but it deserves a lot of credit for being an industry that literally started as a failed online dating site that everyone filled with cat videos. And that's not a <laughs> cat video. Just saying, cat videos is still very popular. Cat videos is still very popular. <laughs> Joke, by the way, if you look into the site's past, it was literally going to be a dating site. I couldn't believe oh. it either, so here's a quote. To generate interest, we just said it was a new kind of dating site. We even had a slogan for it. Tune in, hook up. We didn't have any videos, so I populated our new dating site with videos of 747s taking off and landing. The whole thing didn't make any sense. We were so desperate for some actual dating videos, we turned to Craigslist. It's crazy, yes. right? But the solution to changing YouTube is not to shore up with what we have, try to put a stake in the ground and hold on. Trademarking a word is not going to solve the problem. We live in a world where Fail Army owns and actively polices videos titled People Are Awesome. Facebook literally has the word face trademarked. Subway is working to obtain foot long, and Twitter lost out on tweet to a third party. Pretty soon everything we say will come equipped with a circled R. Even Reddit, perhaps the biggest champions of fair use and shared ownership of ideas, recently got defensive about the Axe deodorant possibly stealing one of the site's shower thoughts for an ad. It what? Sucks when people steal your content, when someone mimics your idea. But trademarks won't guarantee an audience. They'll just kill competition for a while. It's delaying the problem rather than solving it. The true solution is to listen to the audience, to grow and evolve to meet your changing interests, and differentiate from the competition. Grow, evolve, differ dif differentiate. All these are just changes that is... You, you, can't, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. Is it scary that there's no protection or guarantee on YouTube? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It keeps me up every night. Is it scary that there's more competition here than ever from some of the biggest businesses in the world? And that you might find someone whose theories you like better than mine? Absolutely. But what I've really come to appreciate in the aftermath of all the Fine Brothers drama is that we can't treat YouTube like our baby. We have to let it evolve, and we have to let ourselves as creators evolve too. Money doesn't equate to success on this platform. It's about differentiating your content with who you are, what you say, and how you say it. Would it be easier for me if the situation didn't work this way? Absolutely, that'd be sweet. But YouTube is not just mine, or John Oliver's, or Mr. Theorist Fists. It doesn't belong Mr. to Theorist any Fists. single creator. My hope is that by playing my cards right and continuing to listen and talk with you guys, I'll still be here in another five years to see how far we've come as a community. Yes, you are, you are here currently in five years later. Me speaking on behalf of you five years later in 2021. This video came in 2016. You are awesome. Thank you so much, my pet. Thank you. I appreciate it.
Maybe we'll have a diamond play button by then. That'd be sweet. Maybe you'll be watching yeah. all Game Theory episodes in VR rigs with Wario fart rocketing past your face. Wherever the journey ends up taking us, just remember, at the end of the day, I'm committed to you. But hey, that's just a th- I tell you guys I love you, but I don't want to say it and you don't want to hear it. Hmm. <laughs> Eerie. Again. Nah, who am I kidding? A meta theory. <laughs> Seriously, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching too. Ah, the family. So nice. Ah, so sweet. Thank you so much for watching this video. I mean, seriously, thank you so much. Um, if you do like this video, please consider to like, share, and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to share with us. The video that I just reacted to came from the YouTube channel The Game Terrorist. They are amazing and I hope that you will like this video will like their video and support their video as well. And yeah yeah you are here five years later and your channel your subscription growth is more than twice of what you had five years ago. And yeah thank you so much. But hey that's just a theory. A who am I kidding? A meta theory. Actually, it's a fact, right? Not that he's still here five years later. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Subscribe! <laughs> no, seriously, subscribe, please. I, I, I only have 20 subscribers. Don't even say millions. Uh. You'd be happy if I only have one view.